Greetings, greetings, saints of God. We greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are back again. We are back again. By the grace of God, we are back again. And we thank Him for the life that He has accorded us. We thank Him for the life that He has given you. That's why we are living the bread of life that He has given us. We give Him all the glory and all the honor. Today is another day. This is Destiny of Christians International Ministry coming all the way from Douglasville, Georgia. That's where our studios are. And we are bringing the program is the day of the Lord for those who have not been with us. The program is the day of the Lord. And says of God, today is day number 59. From the time we started the program, I count every Wednesday. And today is day number 59. By the grace of God, we have moved, we have moved. I know the Lord has been teaching us a lot, or the Spirit of the Lord has been teaching us a lot. And I know that we have been blessed by the grace of God. We've been blessed and we give Him all the glory and all the honor. Because this is where we study the Word of God, the truth of the Word of God from the Bible. And we understand, like now we've been reading about the book of the Revelation, Revelation made easy. And some of you have been writing us and telling us how they're finding it easy now. May God be may, may, the glory out to God, because the book of Revelation is very difficult to some people. But we, as we study together, you and me, as we study together, the Holy Spirit makes it easy, and we are able to understand the saints of God. Hallelujah. So we want to say thank you for tuning in, those who have tuned in now, and those who will tune there after, especially those who are from Kenya, to Sema Karibuni Sana, may God bless you for tuning in, and good morning Africa, we want to say thank you so much, and everyone who has tuned in, we want to welcome you, this is Destiny of Christians International Ministry, bringing the Wednesday teaching, hallelujah. So we continue with the book of Revelation, as I said, and the Lord has been revealing a lot to us, and I know now those who fear the book of Revelation, they will not fear it again because it has been made easy. The teacher brings teaching that has e are easy to understand through the Holy Spirit. You are able to understand and we want to say thank you to the Lord for giving the teacher the wisdom, the understanding so that he brings the teaching with clarity and simplicity. Even a small child can understand. So we say thank you to, to the Lord and we say thank you to the teacher who works diligently so that he can bring the teaching in clarity and in simplicity. We have our books here. Those who do not know, we have our books here. And the first one is Repentance, Repentance and Faith. This is the first book from the program that we started with. And this book talks about when you got saved, how you repented, what you repented from. And then from there, you start walking by faith, not by sight. You know, when we get saved, we start now depending on the guidance of the Holy Spirit. This is the book that will teach you that and uh, explain to you why you got saved, how you got saved, the prayer that you said, repentance, what you repented from, and then how you start to walk by faith. Hallelujah. And the other book is Baptism. Baptism, this is a very good book. For those who have been baptized and they do not know what baptism talk is entails, this is the book that explains about baptism. And if you have a friend, I always say if you have a friend, maybe you are baptized and you know what baptism is all about, but there's a friend who has not been baptized, buy it from Amazon, you get it from Amazon, and give it to a friend, she or he may decide to get baptized after reading the book. Hallelujah. It is very, very educative concerning baptisms. So you get hold of it and read it and you'll be blessed. You can also share with a friend. And after this program is aired, you can also share with a friend so that you can all be blessed. I want to say thank you to the people that write us. Every time I cannot forget to say thank you. There are people that write us diligently, tell us that they are praying for us. Thank you. May God bless you. Continue praying for us as we continue praying for you. And for those people who come to set the studios so that you can see the voice, the lighting is good. We want to say thank you and God bless you. And any person who tunes in, you don't tune to listen to us. You tune to listen to the Spirit of God and you'll get your portion. Hallelujah. Even tonight as we go on to uh, into prayer, I want to assure you that if you have any needs, if you are sick in your body, if you have gone, if you have been going through spiritual warfare, or whatever the issue is, whisper to the Lord. The Bible tells us that he has inclined his ear to hear us when we call him. So when you go before him tonight, let the Lord know your need, because the Holy Spirit is a desire of man's heart. He knows your need. Let him know your need, and the Lord will the Lord will answer you, or the Lord will reach you at your point of need tonight. So before I welcome the read of the word, let's go before the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for giving us another opportunity a day like today. We are so grateful, Lord, we, have, we are among the living. Thank you for the breath of life that you have given us. 
We know there are many who would have wanted to see the day like today, but they have not seen it. But we thank you, Lord, because you have given us the breath of life and we are among the living. We thank you, my Father, for the blessing that you have released from the time you were together last week until today. Thank you, Father, for every blessing that you have released. We want to say thank you, Lord. And even as we begin this meeting tonight, Lord, we come before with the saints of God, those who are tuned in now, and those who will tune thereafter. We confess of every sin that you have committed. And Father, we ask you to forgive us because we know there is nothing unholy that can stand before you. Wash us with the blood that was shed on the cross for us. So as we begin this meeting, Father, we begin with clean and pure hearts and the righteousness of your Son, Jesus Christ, covering us. We also take authority as children of the Most High God. We want to come against every spirit of the enemy, every arrow he may be sending against us and against your people. We nullify in the name of Jesus every demon that is assigned against us or against your people. We bind them and command them to go back to the bottomless pit in the mighty name of Jesus. And we claim the cup of the blood of Jesus Christ upon ourselves and upon the lives of the believers, those who are tuned in now and those who will tune there after. We also sanctify this place with the blood of Jesus Christ. We also sanctify the dwelling place of your people with the blood of Jesus Christ. And Father, I'm praying that tonight, any need that they may have, because you understand them and you know them, you created us, Father, in your own image, and your spirit is the design of man's heart. You understand the cry of the, of the, heart, the heart of your people. Father, I'm praying that tonight heaven will open for them and there will be an answer, even as the Holy Spirit continues to minister to us. I want to lift up the teacher as he brings the teaching tonight. I want to declare my father that he has no wisdom of his own apart from the wisdom that comes from you. So we speak eloquence, we speak understanding that comes from you, my father. When he stands on this altar, when he opens his mouth, my father, it's no longer the voice of man we shall be tuned into, but we shall be listening the voice of the Spirit of God, speaking your oracles, O God. And as we listen, my father, give us a heart that is able to receive and a ear that is tuned in you because we shut out every other avenue and we release ourselves before you, my father, that we may hear the word and do what be doers of that word. We seal ourselves again with the blood of Jesus Christ and we declare Jesus Christ is Lord to be glorified, to be exalted here on earth and in heaven. So we thank you, father, for every blessing that you are releasing tonight because when your people gather, we do not gather in vain, my Father. You gather to bless us. And you have already blessed us, Father. We partake those blessings. We declare they are ours and our children and their children in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of it all, my Father, you only receive the glory, Jesus, Son of the living God. We thank you, Father, and we honor you. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed and the people of God say, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. So remember the book, Saints of God. We have two books. And remember today is day number 59. And now before I invite the teacher, none other but Reverend Dr. Chaplain Edward Karanja to bring the teaching of tonight. Tune in and share this teaching and get yourself a good Bible and be comfortable because you are going to read. And now I'm going to invite the reader to come and read the word of God together with us. God bless you. The verse for today comes from Revelation chapter 12, verse 13 to 17. And it says, Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times and half a time, from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And that's the word of the Lord. The peace of Jesus Christ rest on all of you as we share together his word. We are going to base our teaching on the reading that has been read for us from the book of Revelation chapter 12 starting from verse 13 to the end of the chapter. There are many things there so we are going to tackle those verses 
bit by bit until we comprehend what is contained in those few verses from verse 13 to 17 of chapter 12 of the book of Revelation. Now, this is where we are. There was or there will be a war in heaven and the war is fought between Michael the archangel and the holy angels of God against the dragon. The dragon is already identified for us in chapter 12 as the devil or the serpent and his demons or his angels. His angels are the demon spirits. So there is this war that goes on in heaven and the dragon and his angels are defeated and the result is that the dragon or Satan is now cast down to the earth. Remember as I told you the war in heaven is not in the heaven of God it is in the second heaven. Remember there are three heavens. The first heaven is what we can see the atmosphere and the stars, that's the first heaven. The third heaven is beyond into space. That is where this war between the dragon and his angels and Michael and his angels, that is where the war takes place. Now, where God is, is called the third heaven. And I explained that during the last topic about the heavens. So, the point is, the dragon is now cast down to the earth. He does not remain in any heaven, neither in the first or second heaven. And now when he is cast down, he will never appear again into the presence of God. Because up to now, he appears before God to accuse every believer. But when this war is fought, and he is cast down to the earth, he will never have access again to accuse the brethren or the believers. Now, we are looking at what he does after he is cast down on earth. And of course, he now concentrates his fury on the woman. We are told from the verses we have just read, that the dragon begins to persecute the woman. Who is the woman? From the previous teachings, based on the word of God, the woman is identified as Israel, the nation of Israel. But I want you to keep in mind that we are not talking about every Jew or the whole of Israel. The woman in this case actually represents what is known in the Bible as the remnant. Now the remnant uh, consists of all the Jews who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we talk about the dragon persecuting the woman, we are particularly talking about the group of Jews, the remnant, that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. But just keep in mind that the woman, biblically, is represented by the nation of Israel. So, here is the dragon or the devil or Satan. He is cast down and now he is furious because he has been unable to destroy the male child who is Christ. Christ is ascended back to heaven. So, now he is down here on earth. He turns his anger and fury onto the woman or Israel. Now, we are going to see what happens when the dragon begins to persecute the woman? Now, we are told in the verses that, we, that have been read for us that when he begins to persecute the woman Israel, we are told that the woman takes flight. She runs from the dragon. Now, remember this is here on earth. And we are talking about physical things. Now, can you imagine Israel running away from the dragon? And you know the dragon is Satan. He has powers beyond human power. So what happens? 
you would expect the dragon to catch up with the woman very easily because the woman does not have power Israel will not have the same power as the dragon has now but something special happens to the woman as she runs away from the dragon this is what we are told that as the woman of Israel this is the remnant of the Jews who believe in Jesus Christ as they are running away from the dragon we are told they are given two wings of a great eagle they are given two wings of the of a great eagle now the the problem now is this what are the two wings of the great eagle what are these two wings of a great eagle we need to learn from scripture what does that mean we know that the word wings already tells us something to do with speed is involved but let us examine what this verse is telling us that as the woman or israel remember these are people they are jewish people who believe in jesus christ they are running away from the dragon who is persecuting them he wants to destroy them why because jesus christ came out of israel and because the, the the dragon was unable to destroy Christ now he turns his wrath against the woman simply because Christ came from Israel it is Israel who brought forth the male child Jesus Christ so the the dragon is angry and furious and he intends to destroy the woman the nation of Israel or the group of Israelites who are running away and he makes every effort to wipe them out now we are then told something miraculous happens that the woman is given two wings of a great eagle now here is the problem many people believe that the two wings represent a huge aircraft or airplane now that is the argument or the belief of some people that's how they think as they try to interpret what are these two wings of a great eagle because the bible is saying the woman was given two wings of a great eagle so in trying to explain this many people have thought of an airplane but i will show you by scripture that it is not possible for an airplane to be provided at this time it is not an airplane it is impossible and we are going to see by scripture why it is not practical to think of an airplane as the means that will be provided to the woman in order to run away from the dragon so this is the issue if some people say it is an airplane what is the scriptural evidence that it is not an airplane because we are trying to give a logical explanation to the two wings of a great eagle but i want to show you by scripture that it cannot be an airplane the first reason i want to show you and share with you is this the jews when the dragon begins to persecute them they they must leave immediately immediately and the urgency of living immediately is captured by the lord jesus christ when he talked to the jews when he was preaching to the jews and he was talking about this time of great persecution the great tribulation this is written in the book of matthew chapter 24 uh, from verse 15 to 18 this is what jesus told the jews when he was here on earth preaching in the streets of jerusalem he said this when these things begin to happen 
run for your life and run to the mountains. So they were given direction as to which way to go, to the mountains. They were told, when you see this thing happening, run for your life. Now, the urgency is so obvious. And Jesus went out to, to show how urgent it is going to be by saying this. If during that time you are at the top of the house, do not go down to your house to pick up anything from the top of the house where you are. Just run to the mountains. That's how urgent it's going to be. And then he says, if you are in the field and you, you, you begin to see these things happening, he said, Don't, do not go to the house to pick up anything. Not even money, not even your coat, not even your shoes. Where you are in the field, begin running to the mountains. That is how urgent it is going to be. What is that telling us? It is telling us that there will be no time to make any bookings. Can you imagine there is a dragon after these people and you start looking for a plane? There is no time even to go to the airport to go and board a plane. The, the process of boarding a plane will take time. And Jesus is saying, don't wait. Don't even go back to your house to pick up anything. Just run to the mountains. That is the first reason that tells us that this two, the two wings are not an airplane. Because there will be no time for an airplane to be boarded. You know that it takes time to board a plane. Secondly, we are not dealing with a few Jews. We are dealing with a large number of Jews who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and they will be running. Where are you going to find an aircraft large enough to accommodate for all the Jews? Those are practical problems against the idea of an aeroplane. So the two wings are not an aeroplane because you can see the urgency in the warning given by Jesus, don't wait, just run. Secondly, we are told by Jesus in the same chapter, uh, that is Matthew chapter 24, from verse 15, he uses uh, 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 this word to show us that they would be running on foot. How can we tell that? From the words of Jesus Christ. The Lord uses these words. Woe to those who are pregnant. And to those who are nursing babies. In those days. Why? Because if you are pregnant you cannot run. If you are nursing babies it is going to be very tough uh, to run. Now, if it was an airplane, there should be no problem whether you are pregnant or nursing a baby. You can simply play, uh, board a plane. But Jesus is showing us it is not a plane. They are supposed to run on their feet. And where they are going to run is to the mountains. How do you expect a pregnant woman or a woman nursing a baby to begin running on foot and the area you are, well, you are running is very mountainous. The terrain will be very difficult for any pregnant woman. So the words of Jesus Christ are telling us it's, it's not an airplane. He is telling that you, you are going to be running on your feet. And that is why he said, woe to those who are pregnant. Woe to those nursing babies in those days. Because it is going to be tough running on foot. So that tells you it is not a plane. Secondly, he also indicates again to us that there is walking that is involved. How do we know this? Again in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 20, listen to what the Lord warned the Jews about. Matthew 24 and verse 20. He said this, and pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. Pray that that flight, when you begin running, just pray 
that it will not be winter. Why? Because it's going to be very difficult in winter if you are walking. You know that. Now, if we are talking of a plane, a plane, we already have uh, planes moving to and fro in winter. So Jesus is again telling us it is not a plane. They are definitely going to walk. And he says, pray therefore. It will not be winter. Because walking will be very tough during winter. Secondly, he says, pray also that it is not on a Sabbath. Why a Sabbath? The reason is the Jews have restrictions on how far to go on a Sabbath day. Indeed, they are expected to walk not more than a kilometer and a half on a Sabbath day. The religious regulations are such that you are not permitted to walk more than a, a kilometer and a half on a Sabbath day because if you do, you are breaking the law. And uh, Jesus had a lot of um, um, problems ab about this particular uh, issue. But I want you to see, Jesus is mentioning the word Sabbath because he is saying, if, it, if it's going to be uh, on a Sabbath, many of you would not like to break the law that limits the distance that you can walk on a Sabbath. Now you can therefore see it is walking that is involved. It is definitely not a plane. Now, I have now shown you by scripture that it is not a plane. The two wings given to the woman or Israel is not a plane. And Matthew chapter 24 from verse 15, it tells you that it cannot be a plane. It is running on foot. Now, how can we then solve the problems of the two wings? What are these two wings then? If they are not a plane, then what are they? Because the Bible is saying the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. In order to understand a little bit, we need to find out in the scripture, where does it talk about wings of an eagle? Where in the Bible will you find something about the wings of an eagle? And we don't have to go very far. I give you the reference. It is Exodus 19 and verse 4. Exodus 19 and verse 4. This is God the Father who was speaking after delivering his people from the bondage in Egypt. Now listen to Exodus 19 and verse 4. God says this. You have seen. What I did to the Egyptians. You know how the Jews were delivered from Egypt during the Exodus. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. And how I bore you on eagles' wings. There it is. How I bore you or how I carried you on eagles' wings. Now, how did God carry the Jews from Egypt on wiggles wings? It is not physically wings. What this word is telling us in Exodus 19 verse 4 is that the two wings in the case of deliverance of the Jews from the, from the bondage of Egypt, the two wings God is talking about refers to his power of deliverance. So the two wings which we are talking about here may refer to the power of deliverance to the Jews who are running. It is simply telling us God is going to carry them again on the wings of a, an eagle exactly the way he did when he delivered his people from Egypt. So the two wings may refer to the power of God to deliver. And there is going to be deliverance for the woman as she is running away. I'll give you another reference. Another scriptural reference to tell us something about the wings. And this one is found in Deuteronomy uh, 32 and verse 11. Deuteronomy uh, uh, 32 and verse 11. Now listen to what it says. 
It says, as an eagle takes up its young, carries them on its wings. Mark those words. As an eagle takes up its young, carries them on its wings, so the Lord alone led him, meaning Israel. This is the way God led Israel from, Exod uh, from uh, Egypt during the Exodus through the wilderness. How did he do it? According to Deuteronomy 32 and verse 11, he says, As a eagle takes up its young, carries them on its wings, so did the Lord carry Israel on his wings. So that is again telling us the two wings is all about God carrying the woman who is running away on his wings again. You can see it makes sense. So I'll give you another reference to show you something about the wings so that you can see clearly God is referring to something else, not an airplane. In Isaiah 40 and verse 31, this is a, a verse that is quoted many, many times by believers. But it reads like this, Isaiah um, 40 and verse 31. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Now, mark those words. How, how, what is going to happen? They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What does that tell us? It is telling us the same thing is going to happen to the woman who is running away. Basically, this word is telling us that the Jews are going to be empowered, they are going to be empowered to, to, uh, to run away. There's going to be an empowerment to these people individually so that they are enabled to run away. Now, notice the word, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not get tired. They will mount up with wings as eagles. Now, the same thing is going to happen to the woman. That's how God is going to come through for them. He will empower them to run. That is the point. They will run. They will not get tired. They will walk and they will not faint. Why? Because God is empowering them. The key word is empowerment to run, to take the flight. Now, I want to share something concerning this kind of empowerment by the Lord so that the, the woman will not feel tired. She will run and not get weary. She will walk and not faint. That's what the word says. Now, I want to show you an, 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 an illustration in the Bible to show you that this is going to be possible as the woman Israel runs from the dragons. And I want to um, ask you to turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18 and we'll read verse 46. 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 46. Now this is the story of Elijah the prophet of God. He had just won a great spiritual battle on Mount Carmel against 450 um, uh, prophets, false prophets of Baal, the idol god. And the whole of Israel was gathered on Mount Carmel as well as the king, King Ahab. They had been drought for three and a half years. And after the, the battle was won by Elijah and God sent his fire that burned the sacrifice of Elijah and everything else. Now Eli Elijah then turned to the king. He told the king, I want you to drive your chariot as fast as you can because there is going to be rain. But I want you to see, there was no rain. Because the, 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 the battle had just been ended. And the sky 
was clear. There was no sign of rain. And here is Elijah telling King Ahab, I want you to run with your chariot as fast as you can. Otherwise, you are going to be overtaken by the rain. But there was not a cloud in the sky. Now, after the, um, the king left, and the king must have ridden very fast, what happened on Mount Carmel? Elijah started praying, and he prayed seven times, each time sending his servant to look towards the sea. And he kept asking his servant, do you see anything in the skies? And for six times, his servant reported, I, there is nothing in the sky. It is as clear as you would expect. Not a, not, a, not a sign of a cloud. But on the seventh time, the servant reported, there is a small cloud like the hand of a man. And when Elijah heard this, immediately something happened. You can read the story in First King chapter 18. We are told he tucked his gowns tight. Then we are told before um, one could even uh, think there is going to be rain, this man is already talking about the sound of rain. He is telling his servant, please go and tell the king to continue rushing because I can hear the sound of rain. Now, something happened. We are told, and I would like you to see verses 39, uh, sorry, verse 46. We are told this. As soon as Elijah finished the prayer, and his servant reported a, a small cloud like the hand of a man, this is what we are told, that the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he outran the king, that is King Ahab's chariot. In other words, the king was already on his way because he was told by Elijah, please, ride as fast as you can because the rain is coming. If you don't ride fast, you are going to be stopped by the rain. Now, after Elijah prays, then we are told he tucked his garment and that the hand of the Lord was upon him. This man, this prophet, ran. He overtook the chariot of King Ahab and arrived fast at the palace. Now you tell me, when did men begin to outrun chariots? Particularly with the knowledge that the chariot had already left. And here is the light, Elijah, and we are told the hand of the Lord came upon him, and this man ran swift, more swiftly than a chariot. That is not humanly possible. What does that tell you? It is because the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah. Hallelujah. In the same way, the hand of God will be on the woman. Exactly the way the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah. So the two wings may actually represent the hand of the Lord upon the woman. Exactly the way it happened with Elijah. And the hand of the Lord on the woman will cause her to run much more swiftly than the dragon. Hallelujah. I want also to share something in the New Testament to show you that the two wings mean actually the power of God. This is found in the book of Acts, chapter 8. The book of Acts, chapter 8, and verse 39 to 40. Now, here is the story. Acts, chapter 8, verse 39 to 40. Here is Philip, the evangelist. He preaches in Samaria, and people are converted. Then, after he finishes his evangelizing, he is told by the Spirit of God, Go to the, uh, the road that leads to Gaza. It is the desert road to Gaza. Go, and you will find a man there with a need. So Philip took his journey from Samaria to Gaza, and there he found the Ethiopian eunuch. 
And the Ethiopian eunuch was trying to read Isaiah 53 and he could not understand. So, Philip was told by the Spirit, approach him and talk to him. And of course, Philip came close and he explained to, Ethiopian, uh, to the Ethiopian eunuch what the passage was referring to. And then, <clears throat> the eunuch asked Philip, why don't you baptize me and I see there is water there. And Philip said, no problem, let's go down to the water. Now, as soon as the eunuch was baptized, he was dipped in water, and then when he came out, expecting to talk more to Philip, guess what happened? In those verses I'm giving you, uh, verses 39 to 40, we are told that the Spirit caught away Philip. The Spirit of God caught away Philip. And we are told instantly that he was found in another place called Azotus. Azotus. Now, from Gaza where he was baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch to Azotus, it is about uh, 30 miles. It's about 30 miles between where he baptized this man and where he was found instantly in Azotus. Now, how do you walk 30 miles in, a, in an instant? You can see it is humanly impossible. But we are told the Spirit of God caught Philip and he was found in Azotus. Now, in the same way, the two wings may simply refer to the Spirit of God catching away the woman exactly the way Philip was caught away by the Spirit of God and transported instantly from one place to another. That tells you the two wings have nothing to do with an aeroplane. It is the power of God. So how do we summarize this? We conclude by saying these, thing, these uh, few things about the two wings of a great eagle. Number one, it is God's intervention as he did during the Exodus deliverance. It is the same power that is going to be um, manifested by God, the power of deliverance. Secondly, the two wings may refer to the hand of the Lord upon the fleeing Jews exactly the way the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah. Or it may mean that the two wings are referring to the spirit of the Lord supernaturally transporting the Jews as they ran away from the dragon. But at the end of it, you can see one thing very clearly. The two wings represent the power of God's intervention on behalf of the woman. The two wings do not refer to an airplane. It is the power of God upon the woman to bring deliverance to her so that she is not destroyed by the dragon. Now, we have now seen what are these two wings that are given to the woman. Now, the second thing we are going to look at next Wednesday naturally follows. What does the dragon do in order to try and catch up with this woman who is being supernaturally helped by the power of God? What is it the dragon tries to do? And we are told he casts a flood in order to sweep the woman away. So what we need to find out is what is this all about? What is this flood that the dragon will cast towards the woman to sweep her off her feet and destroy her? What is the flood? That will be the topic of next Wednesday. As we continue de dealing with those particular verses about the persecution of the woman. I want to end by encouraging every believer who is struggling in one way or another. You may be struggling physically, maybe uh, uh, sickness. You may be struggling spiritually because of warfare. It has not been easy for you. It has been a long time 
but the battle does not seem to end. I want to leave you with these words of uh, Isaiah, which we have shared tonight, Isaiah 40 and verse 31. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I want to say this. Whatever your situation is, no matter how hard it has been, I want you to know, hallelujah, that the promise of the Lord tonight, our time here, is that he is going to empower you. He is going to empower you. You are coming through. He is going to give you the energy you need. He is going to strengthen you. He will make it easy for you to run. He will empower you according to Isaiah 40. Because you and me, we are those who wait upon the Lord. So for now, no matter how long it seems to have been, wait upon the Lord. You are not going to be disappointed. A time is coming when the Lord is going to empower you and he will see you through. Father, in Jesus name, I release your blessing upon everyone. I pray for your favor to rest upon your people. I pray, Father, that every cry of the heart be answered. Even tonight, at this time, I pray, Father, that every tear be wiped away, O oh God. I pray that every heart that is so discouraged be encouraged tonight. It is in Jesus' name I have prayed and all people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.